So when it comes to capturing nonlinear, more complex relationships between variables, we use polynomial regression. For example, take a look at these two graphs. In the first graph, we see that we have this sort of bowl-shaped curve, which reminds us of the function x squared. And in the second graph, we have this sort of snake shape, which reminds us of x cubed. We can also use polynomial regression to capture linear relationships. However, this is not necessary and often simple linear regression and multiple linear regression does the trick quite nicely. So let's now go through an example of how polynomial regression works. So here we have our pressure and humidity data. And when we plot the data, it looks something like this. So with pressure and humidity, we can only really form a simple linear regression model of y hat equals theta zero plus theta one x, which if we plotted on our data would simply just be a straight line. Clearly a more curved relationship such as this would seem to fit our data more nicely. So how do we produce such a model? With pressure and humidity, we're limited to a simple linear regression model of y hat equals theta zero plus theta one x. However, if we add x squared to our data, squaring all of these pressure values, we can now produce a regression model that looks like this. Adding this x squared to our data enables us enables the model to check, is there a quadratic relationship within our data? That is, does our data follow a bowl-shaped relationship? If we were to add x cubed here, our model will then be checking, does our data follow a sort of snake-shaped relationship? And so on and so forth, if we were to add x to the four, and x to the five, we're looking for more and more complex relationships. So let's now see how the polynomial regression model is calculated. So calculating our polynomial regression model follows the exact same principles as multiple linear regression, but here we have x squared, which can simply, which can just be treated as an extra variable. To calculate our model, we find the parameters theta zero, theta one, and theta two, which we do so applying the gradient descent algorithm. We discussed gradient descent in a previous episode. If you guys aren't familiar with this, I definitely recommend checking that video out. So after applying gradient descent, we find that theta zero is equal to 29,167.746 and many decimal places after that. And theta two as 0 0.028558 and so on, giving our final regression model as this. And lastly, if we plot this onto our data, we see that it captures our relationship quite nicely. So lastly, we're just going to use our model to make some predictions. Let's say, for example, we want to define what kind of humidity we could expect from a pressure of around 1,007 millibars. We simply just substitute 1,007 as x. So here I've included all of the decimal places for our parameters. Because we're dealing with such a small humidity range, this makes a big difference. And this gives us a final humidity value of roughly 0 0.716, which when plotted on our graph is here. So at a pressure of 1,007, we can expect a humidity of 0 0.716, which seems very reasonable because if we were to continue this quadratic relationship, it would end up around there, which is what we want. So let's now see how we can evaluate our model. To do so, we can look at what's called the mean squared error, which reminds us of the cost function, which we discussed in simple linear regression. But with the cost function, we had one over two M and, in, and with mean squared error, we just have one over M, where M is the number of training examples. This formula acts exactly as the cost function, calculating the average distance our data points are away from our model. So with a simple linear regression model, we can see visually that it doesn't fit our data well, and this is supported by a relatively high mean squared error of 0 0.01686. And with our polynomial regression model where we added our pressure squared, we see that we get a much lower mean squared error of 0 0.00336. If we were to add pressure cubed to our model, we find that the mean squared error gets even lower. And as we add more and more variables, pressure to the four, pressure to the five, we find our mean squared error decreases even further. So as we add more and more variables to our model, our mean squared error decreases. We might be tempted to think that surely we should just add as many variables as we can, you know, x to the six, x to the seven, and surely this will just produce the lowest mean squared error. And we should just use that model for making predictions for humidity. But take a look at the following model. So this model has hundreds of variables with an extremely low mean squared error. However, it's a bad model to make predictions for humidity because it fails to recognize the general trend. Here we're running into a problem called overfitting where our model fits our data too well that it fails to recognize the overall trend. And the opposite of overfitting is underfitting where we create a model such as the linear model that fails to recognize any trend. Overfitting and underfitting are both common problems in data science, which I plan to dedicate a whole video discussing these concepts and how we can resolve them.
So I hope this video gave you guys a better understanding of polynomial regression and how we can use it to capture more complex relationships between variables. In the next episode, we're going to be going over how we can implement polynomial regression in Python. So I hope to see you guys there.